Okay, so in this video, we learn how do we calculate the dividends, uh, both the preference dividend and uh, the ordinary dividend. In the previous video, I showed you what will be the treatment of ordinary dividend, both when it is interim and when it is final, and how will we treat the proposed dividend. So now let's see how do we calculate the dividends. In this question, it says that the authorized share capital was 1 million ordinary shares of 0 0.5 dollar each. Now, 0 0.5 dollar is the face value or the nominal value per share. Then we have 500,000 10% preference shares of dollar one each. So we are really not concerned about the authorized share capital because that represents the maximum number of capital that the company can issue. And authorized share capital is not reported in the statement of financial position. Uh, neither it comes in the statement of changes in equity okay although it is disclosed as a note in the financial statements in the note to the accounts however we are more concerned with the issued share capital because that is the actual share capital that has been issued to the shareholders so we have 500,000 ordinary shares of 0 0.5 dollar each and we have 250,000 10% preference shares of dollar one each the directors have uh, paid the preference dividend and also the directors have paid the ordinary dividend now in this question th There are basically two scenarios in the first scenario the director have paid the dividend as 10% of the issued share capital that is scenario 1 that is s1 and s2 is scenario 2 An Another scenario which shows that the directors have paid the dividend that is 0 0.8 per share so basically there are two uh, ways in which the dividend can be given in the question. The question can either say that the dividend that the dividend is paid um, on the basis of the percentage of the share capital in scenario like in scenario one, or it can also be based as a dividend per share. So, for example, in scenario two, it says 0 0.8 per share. That is, on every share, a, a small amount of dividend is given. Okay. So now let's first see how will we calculate the preference dividend, and then we'll see how we calculate the ordinary dividend based on scenario number one. So let's see. So in this scenario, you must know that uh, the issued preference share capital is 250,000. Now after 250,000, 10% is written, right? Now this 10% is giving you the preference dividend, all right? This is the preference dividend and the treatment of preference dividend has already been mentioned in my previous video. Now how will we calculate the dividend is we'll simply multiply 250,000 by 10% and this will come to $25,000. So this is the amount of preference dividend that is uh, going to be paid to the preference shareholders before the dividend is paid to ordinary shareholders because it's a preference dividend that is why they have a preference over ordinary shareholders. Now let's see what will be the treatment of ordinary dividend using scenario one. So in scenario one it is saying that the ordinary dividend was paid as 10% of issued share capital. Right. So remember that whenever a percentage is given, what you have to do is that you have to multiply the issued share capital by the percentage of dividend. All right. So first, let's see what the issued share capital is. Now, the issued share capital, it says that the company has issued 500,000 ordinary shares of dollar P0.5 each. So basically, 500,000 is not the issued share capital. It is the number of ordinary shares that have been issued to shareholders, right? So if you find, if you want to find out the issued share capital, what you need to do is that you have to multiply the number of shares issued, the number of shares issued by the par value, that is the face value or the nominal value per share. All right. So in our example. 500,000 shares were issued and the face value per share was 0 0.5. So hence the issued share capital comes to how much? The issued share capital would come to $250,000. Now this is the issued share capital. Now as the dividend is 10% of issued share capital, so basically now we'll multiply this by 10% and now the ordinary dividend would come to 25,000 in total and this represents the ordinary dividend that was paid to the ordinary shareholders and the simple treatment is that we are going to deduct 25,000 from retain earnings in the statement of changes in equity. Now let's mo move on to scenario number two. In scenario number two it says that the dividend was 0 0.8 per share. Now whenever uh, the dividend is calculated per share what you need to do is that you need to find out the total number of shares that were issued in total right so in the question it's quite clearly stated that the number of ordinary shares is 500,000 
so we are already given in the question the number of uh, shares that have been issued but for example if we were not given the number of ordinary shares that are issued and we were directly given the is uh, the ordinary share capital issued that is the, the share capital that we were issued okay so if you are given the issued share capital of 250000 we have to calculate the number of shares issued and how we will do that it's very simple we will divide the issued share capital by the face value per share all right so the issued share capital is 250000 we are going to divide this by the face value per ordinary share and that is 0.5 dollars it was given over here it's 0.5 dollars all right so when we divide 250000 by 0.5 we will get the number of shares that were issued were 500000 shares now these are the number of shares that were issued all right so once we calculate the number of shares that were issued and it's given in the question that the dividend that was paid to the shareholder is 0.8 per share so what we will do is that we'll simply multiply the 500000 shares that we issued by 0.8 per share the dividend that was given and you'll get the ordinary dividend that was paid to the ordinary shareholders which is 400000 so in this video basically we learned two things first of all we learned that the preference dividend uh, will always be given as a percentage next to the um, the number of preference shares that have been given in the question okay so the percentage will always uh, this percentage will always be the percentage of the preference dividend and you will deduct it from the finance cost sorry and you will include this in your finance cost if uh, the preference shares are redeemable however for ordinary dividend there will be two scenarios the first scenario might be that either the question can give you a percentage of the dividend and then you will apply the percentage of the dividend on the uh, the the issued share capital which we did in scenario 1 because we applied the percentage of dividend on the issued share capital right the other scenario will be where you will be given a dividend per share and then you have to multiply the dividend per share multiply by the number of shares that were issued for example if we we did over here in this case and if the number of shares are not given so you will have to calculate the number of shares and how you do that you divide the issued share capital by the face value per share and you get the number of shares for example in our question was 500000 So this was the topic of today hope to see you all next time with another topic in my next video till then take care